السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We commence as always by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and all his companions to bless his entire household and to bless every single one of us Beloved brothers and sisters Last week we really enjoyed ourselves, mashallah, more with the questions that came about and I see they were quite passionate, those of us who were here, we heard what happened and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to bless our homes and indeed I believe that people are good but shaitan is bad. People have good hearts, shaitan comes to try and contaminate those hearts. So if we base our opinions of people on that, inshallah, we'll be able to work with them and on them. And if we then think that, you know, the person has become evil, it becomes more difficult to operate or should I say, to deal with them. Sometimes when we let shaitan overtake us completely, then people would rightfully think that we are devils because we sometimes uh, even make shaitan shy uh, the way we do things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us all goodness. This evening I have a very important subject, short, and inshallah we will thereafter open the floor for questions. The topic is connected to myself and yourselves. We are wearing clothes here, every one of us is wearing something. Mashallah, we are having refreshments here, we have a policy where you take what you'd like from the back there, and inshallah you have it in your hands, you can eat whilst we're talking, and you can also have it before or after. So there is food. And every one of us eats on a daily basis. And at the same time, we have our little modes of transport, be it a motor vehicle, in some cases perhaps a bicycle, in some cases uh, whatever else, even our shoes. We can call them a uh, piece of clothing and at the same time they convey us from place to place. They make it easy for us to get somewhere. And we have homes that we live in. Sometimes they are rented, sometimes... Uh, someone's doing us a favor by just allowing us to put up with them and sometimes the house belongs to us and in that house we have various items so what am I getting to a lot of us have much more than we actually need that's what we want to talk about you open your closet back at home you go into your kitchen open your cupboard you open your fridge your freezers what do you find in there wallahi if you're a believer you will not waste and have anything unnecessary in your closets or cupboards or in your homes or houses or even the clutter that people have all around. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, he left behind nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There was nothing that he left behind. Subhanallah. Uh, he had a baghla, he had a little mule that was there and he had his sword that was there. And that we would, we would term today nil, nothing of you know, what material value. It was just a necessity that was there, perhaps certain items. But he had given away whatever he had and he led a life of simplicity. The reason is, the more you have, the more you cling to the earth and the more you become material and the more you lose focus of the life after death, say what you want, it's a fact argue and debate till you turn green that no I need it and this the more you have the more your cupboards are full the more your closets your freezers are stocked up for so long the more your fridges and your cupboards are actually piled up with things the less your preparation to meet with Allah it's a fact it's a fact so this is why the hadith says Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharibun aw sabil. live this life as though you are a stranger or just a passerby that's what the hadith says. And this, the advice of Ibn Umar radiallahu an, do you know what he used to say? He used to say, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَاحِ If you have seen the morning, don't wait for the evening. Don't think in the evening this will happen. And you may not be there. 
And if you've arrived in the evening, don't think you're going to be there in the morning. And this is a fact. If you think about that every day for 60 years, the day you go, you would also have thought about that. And really, you'd be gone. So this is the blessing of Allah. We have purchases that we make. And I challenge you, and I'd like to challenge everyone, myself included. When you buy a piece of clothing, give one away in your cupboard. See, can you do that? You buy a piece of clothing, open your closet, make space for it. So how do you make space for it? Take out something good, give it away. Sometimes our hearts are too inclined. You say, no, I bought this, but I need that as well. And I need that. And you've got 50, 60 different dresses and different uh, pieces of clothing and suits and what have you. And shoes, oh, every color that there is, is there. Even the new colors that have come about of late, there. A pair of shoes. And you want to match it and so on. There is something called mix and match. Do you know where that came from? The simple people who like to wear different colors that don't match. They call it mix and match, which means... You know what, this is green and that is red. It doesn't go together, but just call it mix and match and wear it and carry on. Allahu Akbar. It's a simple way of saying, you know what, I don't have 45 pairs of shoes. But some people, every tint of clothing they have, they have the same tint of a scarf, they have the same tint of, of shoes, they have the same tint of accessories, they have the same tint of makeup, and they have the same tint of absolutely everything, including the cutlery that they will serve that particular day in the home because the visitors are coming. They must see. I hope I'm not giving people ideas here. But they must see. People must see, no, my clothing, the cutlery, the tablecloth, uh, everything else, you know, even, what do they call them? Those... Uh, or everything else in the home, matching, you know, subhanallah. The truth is, if Allah has blessed you, we're not saying don't allow that to happen. Don't cling to things like those. They are not important in your life. Don't worry. Don't try and set a trend of the dunya. Set a trend of the akhirah. That's a fact. Set a trend of the life after death. This person, they were the wealthiest. They had the best vehicle. They never missed a salah. That's a trend. This person, they were the wealthiest. They had a home which was computerized. They were the most humble down to earth. They did not waste. What is extravagance? To have two of what you need one of. That's extravagance. So if you have quality, quality is not connected to extravagance. If you have quality and you're making use of it, alhamdulillah, if you could have afforded it and you did afford it and you brought it along or you bought it, for example, and you don't have wastage and you know it's within your means, like I said last week, if you are, if we had to place an order between 0 and 10, for example, and your lifestyle was sitting at 9, you're allowed to buy things within 7 and 8 and even 9. You may, because that's your lifestyle. Allah has blessed you with something. But you cannot waste to say, now that I've got, let me buy 5 vehicles and I'll just keep them parked here. And you know, every day I'll just drive one, come out and go back. You might want to have two vehicles, perhaps, maybe. Even some of the scholars will tell you that's a waste of wealth. Just as well we're living in a third world country. If you were living in Europe, it is far more expensive to have a second vehicle because you know the taxes and everything else that, pay, that is paid. And even the space in London, the space you have to pay for is so much that you might be able to purchase a little vehicle just by paying the taxes of that big vehicle of yours for, for a few months or a year. So we are living in a country of this nature. It does not mean that waste your money. No. Nor does it mean that fill everything because you know tomorrow you might not get flour in the shop. Okay. So how much do you have? Oh, we've got a stock for the, for the next two years. Come on. Be reasonable. Be realistic. If you're talking of a month to three months, you're talking okay. But you're talking of a year. What are you talking about? You know, you might die within a, a week of having stocked up for two years. This is the hadith the Prophet ﷺ drew one day on the ground a little rectangle and from the rectangle, one end of the rectangle to the other, he drew a line and the line carried on outside the rectangle. And then he drew little dots inside that rectangle and little strikes. And then he says, do you know what this is? And they were obviously very, very curious to know what it was. He says, this is man. This rectangle is his life. And this line going out, his hopes and aspirations and his wishes and what he wants to achieve and his plans, they go far beyond his life. So the, the life is going to end here and your plan is still for another two years. So wouldn't you be a winner if you planned for death as well? You kept death in the equation. Think about it. This is why we say those who think of death every day, I might die, my child might die, my wife might die. It's not abnormal. 
But it's abnormal to keep thinking that and not developing a link with the one you're going to go to. That's abnormal. Very abnormal. So try and do something. Say, Ya Allah, talk to him. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ya Ilahi, forgive me. Ya Ilahi, this. And do things that head in that direction. Wallahi, the day you die will be such a blessed day because for you, you are going to the best place. The place that you were actually looking forward to throughout your life. So this is why we say, let's learn what it's all about. I challenge you to go home tonight. And if not tonight, tomorrow morning. Open your cupboard. Take out unnecessary pairs of clothing that you have not worn. Let's be generous. You have not worn for one year. Take it out. You don't need it. Believe me, I am telling you a fact. Your heart will not allow you to do it in most of our cases. I'm just telling you. Just as well I'm sitting with all the men in front of me. I wouldn't like to see the expressions of the sisters hearing this. If you have not worn a pair of shoes or clothing for one year, believe me, it's about time. Sacrifice it for the sake of Allah. And for Allah's sake, don't think you're going to fit back into that size. Because to be honest with you, it's just something you'll keep hanging for a long, long time. May Allah grant us all good size. I mean. So why I say this is we know the excuses. People leave things and they say, you know what? Don't worry, I'll get there, inshallah. I'm going to work hard. Work hard, mashallah. And yet... On one hand, you want to work hard to fit into a size 10 or 12. And on the other hand, you've stocked food for two years. Look at that. That's what we're talking about today. So empty out your clothing and empty out the food. What that means is, make sure you know. You don't have to pack up so much that you are shy of your own self. Come on. Yes, we are not saying don't prepare for a rainy day. No, by all means. But you don't have to pile up like you're not going to die. Like that's the only thing you're living for. Subhanallah. You may, if there is a real shortage of something or expected shortage of something and you'd like to purchase a little bit just to keep yourself covered. Alhamdulillah. Get used to doing without certain things. You know why? A day may come when that might not be there at all. What this means is, today, if I am used to, and this happens to all of us, I'm going to hit the button. Let me try and give an example that might not affect everyone. Okay. If I'm used to a certain type of a cereal, right? And say, for example, suddenly I see that cereal on the shelves. And I go and I stock up. How many did I buy? Well, you can buy worth about two months, say, for example. You know, in Zimbabwe, you would be lucky if you've got that amount of cash. Some people would go and borrow the money, to be honest. And now you come and you've got so much of it. And you put it away. And you're so excited and happy. Wow, I packed up. Okay, let, let's study what goes on in your mind. So now you're enjoying it and so on. The factory stops making it. And after the two months, what happens? It's, lo- it's no more there, number one. Number two is, it's not even available in the market. It's not even being produced. So ultimately, you're going to have to give it up. If you're not used to, because of your lifestyle, you become depressed. You phone New Zealand and tell them to courier it by DHL. It happens. Courier it, send it. Wallahi, is this the affluence that we've got to? Would you ever do that to say, look, I'm about to spend X amount of money that I've spent on a dress in order to purchase Islamic books or Islamic literature so that I can become a better Muslim or to enter a course and to do this and to do that. Can we do that? It's a fact. Make an effort. But we are quickly, you know, we are ready to buy something. We're very quick at that. When it comes to a piece of clothing, or the, you know, people sometimes collect money in order to buy a pair of shoes. We're not saying no, but it's an unnecessary pair of shoes. Unnecessary. So the money that you collected, let's not now say it's haram, but let's just look at the dedication. You had shoes, they were okay for you. You collected money because you wanted a different color. And you, the fact that you collected money means that you're not living on that particular lifestyle level. You're not on that level. You've got to actually pile up, collect. And is shoes something that you actually, meaning a second, third, fourth pair of shoes, something that you would actually need to collect for? Allahu Akbar. I challenge you, the slippers you have at home, go home, whatever you haven't used for a year, pick it up and give it away. I tell you what happens now. The Quran says, لا تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون. 
you will not achieve righteousness until you spend that which you love. What do you love? You love your clothes. Give them away. Whilst you love them with us, we cling to them so badly that we wait until it's tatty and unwearable, then we give it away. Wallahi, it's a fact. Why? Because your charity is not actually a charity. You use the poor person as a bin to throw away things that were more or less unwearable. It's a fact. And then we say, I gave away so many old things. Hang on, hang on, hang on. When the food developed worms in it, you gave the flower away. When the fruit became rotten, you gave it away. And you said, my sadaqah, my charity. Hang on. Do you know what happened to Abel and Cain, Habil and Kabil, right at the beginning? When Cain had given a charity that was not befitting what should be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he took out from his crop that which was the worst of it and put it. And he says, right, this is my charity. Allah says, we reject that. So that was one of the first stories that occurred in existence of man. And we don't learn from that charity to say, man, spend from that which you like. We're not saying give the best. If you have the heart to give the best, wallahi, that is righteousness. It shows that your heart is not clinging to little items of the dunya. You have a phone and suddenly you get a better phone. The better one, you gave, you gave it away. Now you're speaking. Now it shows your heart is a, is a heart that we thank Allah for what He gave us. But we're not stuck to these things. We're not people who become miserly. I can give away the best of my stuff. So what? Who do you give it away to? Someone else. Let them enjoy it. So what? Alhamdulillah. We're ready to do that. This is why I repeat. If we become people whose closets and cupboards and fridges and houses are full of items from 1920 up to today... Choco block, everything in the corner, pack, pack, pack. And someone says, when are we going to empty this? Hey, that's my great, great grandfather's. Do you understand? Wallahi, give it for a charity. He will benefit from it. You're keeping it saying sentimental value. What are you talking about? When whoever after you die comes, let's say, what rubbish is this? Burn it, throw it away. Nobody even used it. The children of today don't want the antiques of a long time ago. They don't. And you think sentimental value. They no sense don't work anymore. It's dollars. Believe me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. If you are sticking to that type of mentality, you will never be able to be a charitable person, haqqan, which means in the true sense. Because you will only give away things that are in reality not fit to give away. They're not fit. Why? Hey, my shoes started talking, so now I gave it away. You know, children speak at the age of one roughly. You wore your shoes for one year, it also starts talking. When it started speaking, I gave it away. Hang on. Repair the thing first. No, but these were Chinese shoes. I bought them for so much. And if I repair them, I'm going to pay enough for another pay. Well, then what are you giving them away for? The poor fellow who's going to take it, he cannot afford fixing it. You can. You're giving him a rotten pair of shoes. And you know what we say? It's more like, it's more like uh, an indemnity or whatever you'd want to call it. Where we say, you know what? If you want it, have it. If you don't want it, give it to someone else. Okay, we heard that. That means you know it's embarrassing to give it to someone. Yesterday, I saw a charity in the UK advertising. They sent me a forwarded email. And then on that email, was very interesting. They said, we only accept good used clothes which are washed and ironed and folded properly. And they gave photographs of what they will accept. Anything that is not up to this standard, we will not accept. And I said, there will be people who will think, look at these people, they're arrogant. Muslim appeal or whatever the name is, I forgot what it was. They are so arrogant, they only want things to be ironed and put forth. But wallahi, they are right. They are correct. You're giving a, a poor person your shirt you wore for three years. You give it to him ironed and folded. He will consider it brand new and he will appreciate it. Rather than giving it to him in a way that even if it's a new shirt, but it's it's crumpled and it's all full of creases and it's thrown at the guy as though it is something that is of no value he, he will not even appreciate people will start thinking you know what these guys okay we are desperate we've accepted what has come in our direction but look at what they've done they treat us like pieces of dirt whereas the poor person in Islam is such a big blessing without him the doors of charity would be closed where were you going to give your zakah if there were no poor people? So Allah kept poor people and people who are underprivileged, people who come to you begging. 
people who come to you asking people who come sometimes give them a piece of clothing give it away why not you have a pair of trousers they're not fitting you you have you know whatever else you have you may give it away and so on make sure that it is wearable it is good that's why i say open your closet tonight wallahi for the pleasure of allah and i challenge you i challenge you remove from it that which you have not worn for a year look at it i know it will take long for some people look at it take it out check it up and down say bismillah for the sake of allah this thing i actually don't need it and i'm going to give it away fold it properly nicely and give it to anyone you have so many different people who uh, would distribute that whether it is the majlis ul ulama or the zakat fund or africa muslim agency whatever it is wherever you would feel or even if you want to give the poor person directly you may give them and you will find that you will achieve a reward for that someone somewhere somehow will be wearing that particular item amazing and they will give you a dua when we went on a camp on a distribution of uh, f- clothing there were certain items of clothing we could not give we had to just put it away we said astaghfirullah because it was so tatty so unwearable it was already torn up and whatever else that we said no and there was another category that we also couldn't away uh, couldn't give away because it was shameless clothing may allah protect us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness it's hard you know you busy promoting especially when you go to poor people you're promoting good clothing please don't wear this type and that type and they all have mashallah brilliant clothing and then you the same person who gives them you know skirts that are no longer mini it's just a me even the knees missing from it allahu akbar allahu akbar allah protect us you know before they said mini skirts it was halfway between the, the knee and, and and perhaps you know the hip and nowadays it's halfway that as well i wonder what they call it wallahi it's it's tough and then we as ulama you know we've got to give that away to who to a sister in islam come on relax take it easy you know may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness and ease so this is the topic i wanted to remind ourselves about when we when we are purchasing things remember you know learn really to purchase wisely we are not saying don't stock but know how much you are stocking and you must know what you are putting go home today if not today say this weekend and wallahi follow it through for the sake of allah everything unnecessary that is packed up in your storage or in here or in there that you haven't made use of for a long time give it away if your heart cannot do that much you have a lot of work to do with your own heart Go and see the storage. There are things in there that you're never going to use. Sometimes there's cutlery that's sitting for 20 years. Why? Like I said, my my ancestors, Allahu Akbar. I mean, are you going to look in the glass and they talk to you? What happens? Allahu Akbar. And we 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 pack up things. Wallahi, I've seen people who have typewriters. They've collected three of those old da 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 da. You know those ones with a ribbon which has half half blue and half red. and and it's got a ribbon that has three blue green and red and you press the tab for the color i we, and three of them where collecting dust in one corner you say brother what's happening she says i don't have to pay zakat for this it's taking space here your heart is you have now left it to the degree that no one is going to want it or use it now when you give this away don't think it's a charity take it to warren hills or whatever they call it and dispose of it allahu akbar What are you talking? Say no, sentimental. Okay. Then go to Sotheby's in London and get it sold. The 5000 pounds you collect for it, give it to charity. No. Then we don't want. If it's really sentimental, go to the auctions. See what they offer you. Who else understands it's sentimental? If they do, sell it to them. The wealth will be used more appropriately today. But no, we collect. I know of someone who came to me and they made a big donation of certain things and I looked at it and I saw literally 1920 things and i said subhanallah i don't know what i'm going to do with this thing here but i said uncle you know what mashallah it's a good thing but at the same time how do you how would we give this to the, the people of today so he says these are golden lines you don't even know when we were young you couldn't even get half of these things i said uncle when i was young we didn't even know about these things now when these children are young they don't even use these things they won't even know what it is he says but they are golden line then he asks me a question can i deduct it from my zakat 
Look at how our hearts have become. All this is because your cupboard is filled with too much clothes. That's where it starts. Too much. Take it out. Believe me. Open that cupboard and take out those things you are not go- you haven't worn for one year. Why do we say one year? In one year the seasons have passed. So the cold, the hot. I'm going to go tonight by the will of Allah and take out as much as I can. Believe me. I do that regularly. But just to make it, it's a challenge for myself. I will go tonight, pack it aside. I have a law, a rule. I try to follow it. We, you know, we are human beings. Every thobe I have, if it, a new one comes in, an old one goes out. A good one. And it goes to people whom I know they will wear. Subhanallah. And the same applies to your shoes and everything else. Come on. Come on. You are in sun. Don't allow yourself to become very clingy and miserly. And you cling towards these material items. Like I said, I guarantee you, if your heart is connected to materialism, it will never have prepared for the akhirah. It cannot. Because Allah says, you will never achieve righteousness. Never. Lan tanalu. Lan means you will not ever achieve righteousness until you give away. Spend. Tunfiqu. Spend. That which you love. What do you love? My clothes, my this, my that. Wallahi, look. The sisters, in this country maybe we don't have such a big problem, but it still exists. In other countries it's worse. Every function, you need a new dress. Why? Because they saw me in this one, the last function, it's an embarrassment. Every function, you need a new color, you need a new cut, you need a new accessory, you need a new type of earrings. And now, you need a new scent. Wallahi, it's a fact. If that's your life, every salah, read a new page of the Quran. Then we're talking business. Then we're talking business. Tell yourself, the hijab is not meant to attract, but to cover. So if I am wearing hijab, alhamdulillah, there there are steps of it, which our sisters sometimes work through. And we encourage them to get to the top as soon as possible or to get to that which is acceptable. So if you find someone wearing their little jeans and you know their, their tops and they're carrying on without it, we make dua that at least one day they put on some form of a cloak when they go out because that really protects them. Wallahi, it protects them from the jinn and the devil and shaitan and the, e- and the evil in so many different ways. They don't realize it until it actually happens. Then from there... Instead of having the glamoury and glittery and everything else, it, it, it will progress inshallah. One day it will become less. But let's not even get to that point because today we are stuck at the first point. Like I say, Wallahi, I want to pause for a moment with our fridge. And this applies to the sisters, even some of the brothers maybe, but more the sisters. Go home and open your fridge. Sometimes you've got to close your nose. Why? Yesterday's food, the day before, that little, this, the other days. And you know what happens? We cannot part because, hey, that fish was nice. We can't part. Hey, this, put it in the freezer. Hey, relax. Put it in the freezer. You want Zesa to disturb it so that in a way that after three days it's rotten and you're going to throw it out? Is that what you're waiting for? And your generator don't work? Believe me, if you have prepared a new meal today, give out yesterday's out. Imagine how generous that is because we are not saying give from what you prepared today. Although that is the true quality of a Muslim. But we are saying what was yesterday's? Give it away. Generously. Generously. You know sometimes people come to our gates. We do not encourage that. We don't. But sometimes we've got so much that Allah sends them as a blessing. And still we say... Go, I got nothing. Allah says, you know what, hang on. You opening the fridge 50 times, you know, your children are complaining, your, perhaps your in-laws are complaining, hey, they got to open the fridge with their noses closed. So many things are stuck in there. And for your info, if you want to get that smell out, you need a piece of coal in your fridge. It sucks the smell. It works. Go and try it, inshallah. Believe me, we'll be more interested in the coal than emptying our cupboards that I spoke about. So, if you open that fridge and you take out from it, what, what is unnecessary? Come on. You cannot pile. Your fridge must look neat and smart. You're a believer. Believe me. You know, you might think, how is this man relating it to Islam? Because we are not supposed to be collecting stuff of that nature. Do you know that Qurbani and Udhiya, it was such that Rasulullah sallallahu says, كُنْتُ نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنِ الدِّخَارِ لُحُومِ الْأَضَاحِ أَلَا فَكُلُوا وَالْدَّخِرُوا He says, I used to, it used to be prohibited for you to store the meat of Qurbani. It was haram to store it. You had to eat it or give it away to someone who's going to eat it. 
at that particular time or before it actually becomes bad. And there, there were no fridges and freezers like we have today. Then he says, however, now you may eat and you can store as well. So, mashallah, the permissibility to store has become, you know, manifest and it's now the rule. We are allowed to store. But now the question is, how much are you storing? You have so much in here that before you eat it, it's going to go bad. A lot of people and houses are guilty of having food in the fridge and keeping it until it goes bad and then throwing it away. Wallahi, it's a fact. The sadaqah and the charity is counted when you give it away as it is fresh or edible. So I challenge you for that as well. Let's go home tonight. Open your fridge. You might, you might have to close it straight away. But anyway, you open it and you check what's happening in it. Empty a lot. And I don't mean empty it tonight and leave it aside because tomorrow morning it will be bad. But what we mean is make your mind up to say this fridge needs to be clear. And I, I really I need to keep it such that I have you know, proper utensils which are collecting some of the stuff that I need in there. There's a bit of milk, there's water, there's perhaps leftover food or tomorrow's food perhaps. And you know, something that we are going to consume and something that is definitely going to be there. But believe me, not more than that. Not more than that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us use our freezers for necessity. The reason I say this as well, if you were to die now, right now, all of you, Think within yourself, myself included. If I drop dead here and now, what's going to happen? They're going to go and check my closet. They're going to check my clothing. They're going to see what I had. The fridges are full. The freezers are choking. Everything is happening. And I've, I, I've been set. That the women who are materialistic will say, Wow, she lived it up. She really enjoyed life. The real people will say, I hope she prepared for the Akhirah. Ya Allah, forgive her. That's a reality. I don't know why I'm saying she, she, she. Drop the S. It belongs to the he's also. May Allah protect us. Really. If I die right now, what have I left? What charities have I given? There are things you haven't used for two years. You know, if you're not strong enough to give away that which you haven't used for a year, okay, st you started two years. Started two years. You're going to get somewhere. Believe me. You will achieve. I know. I'm talking to categories of people who really are affected by what I'm saying. So this is a reality. This talk will be pasted on the net within moments of it completing. If you want to listen to it again, you may do so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. And uh, you know, this is something I am very passionate about and I keep on repeating. We've only spoken about two or three things. I've spoken about your cupboards. I've spoken about the freezers. Uh, I've spoken about your storerooms where you've stored things that are totally unnecessary. You know, you have a washing machine. You have the latest one which is... Uh, what can I say, uh, activated by sound, by your voice, voice activation. And then you have one which is sitting from 19, I don't even know when. And it's sitting in your store collecting dust and it's sitting and there's a fridge there which hasn't been used for ages. There are people who, are, who, who cannot afford a fridge or a washing machine or anything of that nature who would have done with that a long, long time back. Now you've left it to the degree where nothing is fit besides throwing it away. People will charge you to come to your house to take it. That's how bad it is. And we say we are Muslim. Where is Islam? Islam teaches you to be charitable. Give away that which you love when it is in a condition that will be appreciated by those whom you give it to. I think we've said a lot about this. So inshallah, I will end this particular session uh, opening the floor inshallah for questions and inshallah we will try uh, and answer them. They do not necessarily have to be on this particular subject. They can inshallah be uh, on any other topic inshallah.